Thank you, Mr. President. Many who see the title of the report that's before us, 28-80, Implementation of the 2009 Goldstone Report, will wonder why it is that this Council is devoting precious time to events of six years ago while ignoring gross human rights violations being perpetrated now by most of the countries who just took the floor, including Egypt, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia. But the Council has decided that the Goldstone Report is a vital issue for the world, so let us talk about it. To recall, the report was a shocking 500-page indictment of Israel accusing its political and military leaders of targeting Palestinian civilians during the 2009 war. Hamas, the terrorist group, cheered the report. A year and a half later, however, Goldstone retracted. Now, one of the enduring mysteries has been how it is that Judge Goldstone could have reached such one-sided conclusions in the report. Today, we are going to reveal how this happened. I invite everyone in this chamber to go on the internet and go to the site facebook.com slash unwatch as I present the 5,000 word essay and its evidence that is now posted there. Mr. President, today for the first time in the United Nations we reveal that a key figure on the staff writing the Goldstone Report was someone whose life's dream was not objectivity and neutrality but to prosecute Israelis for war crimes and who just prior to being hired by the UN for this task devoted several years of her life to making this dream come true. She published substantial anti-Israel publications and took a leadership role in waging lawfare. In 2007 she offered tips to travelers on how to pass through Israeli security and avoid being checked. In 2008 she told people how to go through the tunnels. In 2010 she was a key spokesman for the flotilla that was organized by terrorist groups to go to Gaza. Mr. President, the High Commissioner a few days ago asked that we hold his office accountable. Today we asked the High Commissioner to investigate how this breach of basic norms and objectivity, basic norms of objectivity and neutrality took place. I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. While I think it is in order to focus on how a report is generated in general, I think it is not in order to um, name and shame, so to speak, particular members of the OHCHR. The next speaker is the World Jewish Congress. Thank you, Mr. President. The seven reports tabled today add to the long list of travesties generated under the auspices of this Council. These reports are not accurate, they are not just, and they will set back the cause of human rights. From the existence of this special Item 7, to this Council's lopsided resolutions, to the unbalanced selection of incidents it chooses to investigate and criticize, to the biased wording of its reports, it is clear that the purpose of these efforts is to single out and delegitimize the State of Israel rather than advancing the values it claims to uphold. Hamas and its ilk will keep on provoking disastrous wars with Israel, including by kidnapping and murdering Israel citizens and rocketing its population centers. Why? Because they know that however atrocious their behavior, this Council will reward them by ignoring their responsibility and excoriating Israel. Indeed, this Council continues to support those who violate human rights on a daily basis, including deliberately those of its own citizens, and who spread terror and cynically manipulate and seek to weaponize the laws of armed conflict to achieve their nefarious goals. The tragedy of today is that in seeking to single out and delegitimize the State of Israel, in compromising your sacred responsibilities for cynical political advantage, you are instead delegitimizing this Council tarnishing the United Nations, setting back the cause of international law, and letting down millions of victims of actual human rights abuse. Finally, we hope that the delay in the report due from Judge Mary McGowan Davis suggests that that report will be something we have never seen from this Council before on the Middle East conflict, namely an intellectually honest report that for the first time identifies the parties actually responsible for the suffering over there, especially by the Palestinians. Then, this Council may actually advance human rights. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is the International Association of Jewish, Lawyer, Jewish Lawyers and Jurists. Thank you, Mr. President. The International Association of Jewish Lawyers and Jurists is surprised. After many years as an NGO with consultative status in this Council, we did not think this could be possible, but today's discussion surprised us. This Council chose to discuss seven different reports concerning the same issue. As stated by us earlier today, this is absurd and counterproductive. 
the existence of so many mandate holders, resolutions, and reports is useless and unjustifiable. It serves a hidden agenda that has little to do with the protection of human rights, ensuring accountability, and promoting a viable solution to the situation. The content of the different reports presented today before this Council confirms our perception that the existence of numerous mandate holders and reports do not serve the purpose of this Council or its mandate. Some do not have any added value, nor do they contribute to the discussion. The vast majority of the reports presented here today do not address all human rights violations in the area committed by all actors. Most of them overlap and replicate one another. Believing that cooperation with this Council and its mechanisms is essential, we have contributed to its work in the past, including under this item. Nonetheless, so far, we witnessed one-sided outcomes, singling out only one party to a long conflict. For example, the mandate of the COI on Gaza temporarily starts only on June 13th, although the kidnapping of the three Israeli teenagers by Hamas occurred on June 12th. The report submitted by the FFM on the settlements failed to address any improvements made by Israel and any judicial guarantees that do exist for Palestinians. We can Time is up. I'm sorry. We have to move on. The next speaker is Prevention Association of Social Harms. They seem to be not present. In this case,